love that whole world of the kitchen. It's like no other, you know? It's just like this community of uh, rejects. And uh, the craziest are always gonna be in the, in the dish pit. A kitchen is all about timing. A dishwasher needs to be on top of his game. It's crucial, you know? We, we can't cook food if the plates and the pan's not clean. The dishwasher, it can get pretty intense. There's a certain adrenaline rush or something to it, though. There's a little bit of a high. And it's nice to get through a service without dying. You're doing this for eight to 10 hours, and you're not sitting down. You're constantly going. It's almost like a ballet. It's like the guys washing, rinsing, putting all the plates away. It's beautiful. If somebody really wants to do it, you got to be a bit crazy. You need a bit of crazy in your life. You need that spice. Satanic dog. Anyways, that really good. Just trust me, watch that show, man. It won't change your life, but it's fucking amazing. Sean, very skilled dishwasher when he wants to be. Uh, when he first started, uh, it was uh, it was cute. What were you doing before here, Sean? Oh my God, racing. Before I was doing machining, and uh, that was good racket for a while, and then it was shit. I was one. making airplane engine parts. Oh, yeah, when he was telling us that he was making engine parts, <laughs> I was like, I'll never fucking take a plane I'll never ever fly again. Well, it's really hard to say that you were shit at the beginning of your career, though. <laughs> Some guy quit in the summertime. And uh, I was on my last day of the other job, and Brent called me up. And I was walking the streets of Montreal, and it was just like, I could start, like, Thursday. And that's what I did, started Thursday. and. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I remember his first couple of days. He actually quit on the second day, right? It was terrifying. It was overwhelming. You uh, you quit on the second day, and then I got, we told you you're not going anywhere. How long has it been since then? Almost two, two years? years, a year yeah. and a bit. No. It's easy to quit, but you miss out on a lot of shit in your life if you do that. dining restaurant I've worked in. I've worked in like a big chain restaurants back in uh, back in Texas. Behind, back, back coming in. It's it's so much different than just like chilies. We have about 50 reservations. Um, each table probably gets about seven to nine uh, plates. So you just multiply that by how many people that are gonna be here and that's how many plates you're gonna see back here. Also knowing about what plates are which. Fish plate. Six months ago, I got my bachelor's degree in philosophy. And I chose dishwashing because I have done entry level work most of my life. And I like working hard. I think there's something about, you know, doing a good job uh, with something that's very physical. I guess I've never really put it in a quote but my philosophy is to just do well. I hope in five years that some of my student debt is paid off. That's about the only goal I have. Glass behind. It's a métier que j'adore. I peut pas même mieux que ça. Dans le monde, ils me disent, ah, oh, ben, pourquoi tu fais ça? Puis là, c'est une job de, de merde, en guillemets. Mais moi, je me dis, 
t'as pas de ce métier. Puis le monde nous dit, ah, mais moi, je le ferai pas, tout ça. Mais toi, c'est toi, moi, c'est moi. C'est le même que je vois, ça. Ici, il y a le plongeur, là. C'est beau, beaucoup de mentalité. Faut que tu travailles ton cerveau. Puis quand je m'en vais, des fois, j'ai même pas le temps de parler à la personne, mais je suis juste dans ma bulle, comme qu'on appelle, là. occupé. C'est beaucoup plaisir. Merci pour t'aller en avant chercher la vaisselle. Va bon, bien, toi? <rire> euh, mettons, les wifi sont trop occupés, ils vont partir de leur place, ils vont venir m'aider. As-tu besoin d'aide? Es-tu correct? As-tu faim? Tout ça, d'apparemment, ils me lâchent pas. Ils me lâchent pas. Ce que j'aime beaucoup ici, parce qu'ils ont bien du respect. C'est ça qu'il y a. J'aime rendre service pour une raison. Parce que moi, je suis pas un gars qui ne sait rien faire, je suis pas vraiment. Faut que je bouge. Si je bouge pas, c'est pas bon. This is my parents' old room, which is my room for now. You can see that me and my brother have been packing, so everything's a complete disaster. We're just trying to uh, go through everything that was my parents' and ours and trying to decide what we're keeping, what we're getting rid of. When the rainier days came, it wasn't easy to take care of everything. You know, you have school taxes and hydro and you know your cell phone bills and everything like that. So. Some stuff got out of hand, and while we weren't here, we kind of let it go a bit. And, uh, yeah, so now we're trying to take out a loan so that we can pay school taxes to sell the house, so that we can uh, move on with life, get out of here, and uh, have a fresh start. Me and my brother found out that my dad had lung cancer. Life changed quite a bit from, from that point. Towards the end, we were taking care of him, you know, whatever he needed, or just simple things like, you know, like make some some pot brownies or something like that, so, you know, ease uh, his pain and just, you know, be there, support him, and spend time with him. And uh, after he passed away, it was that was pretty rough, but we were trying to move on, you know, be be there for my mom and stuff. And uh, that's when we started to notice weird, just weird stuff about her behavior. That's when we took her to the hospital and we found out that she had a frontal lobe dementia. And that was like onset from depression of my dad passing away. So it was one thing to another and that's when we were like, my brother and me knew we were in for like a, a, a rough ride. And she gradually got sick to the point where, you know, whether, whether it was worth her, you know, living those days out or not. And, She, yeah, she was pretty miserable and her quality of life was very poor and we had to pretty much decide to like to pull the plug. My mom was like definitely the anchor and whatever so when she passed away it was we flew off the handle for a while. We, were, we got a little crazy. It was, it was tough. You know, that's the time where I was started to get really bad using drugs. You know, like you have those things in your life, like an epiphany or a turning point or something, a fork in the road, whatever. Like, just with my parents passing, I, I, I already didn't want to do machining. It was more like a security thing, a peace of mind for them. My buddy was telling me he got me a job in telemarketing, and he's like, if you stay off cocaine, I can hook you up maybe with a job at this restaurant, Bremner, doing, you know, maybe just washing dishes. But I always was into the gardening, you know, that's what, like, kind of gave me peace when I was losing my mind, trying to just find different things to do. And, um, uh, yeah, what was I saying?
my house. derived from an early rave dance back in the late 1980s in similar styles to the Charleston, lots of uh, swing dance incorporated moves, starting from Melbourne, Australia to the US and now Canada. Oh, je parle pas français très bien. Okay, I just wanted to see how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just follow me. Come on. So being a dishwasher definitely was influenced by not being able to speak French. Je parle pas français très bien. You know, obviously, I can only get certain types of jobs. I can only get um, so far in the city. So I've made an active effort to learn, but um, it's challenging for sure. Dancing becomes this form of communication that really connects you no matter what, and you don't have to speak anything. And uh, so it's really helped me kind of feel at home in Montreal, even with people that maybe don't speak the same language as me. Je vais rester en forme, je vais aller euh, sur le canal de la chaîne, puis je vais aller méditer. Ça me donne de l'énergie. Je reviens plus euh, à moi-même, puis là, je peux fournir. C'est pour ça qu'ils m'appellent la machine. Ça fait beaucoup de bien au corps, ça te relaxe, puis ça enlève le stress. Après ça, j'ai des téléphones. Ouais, euh, John, t'as-tu des affaires à faire l'après-midi, comme t'as dit? Ou je vais prendre une marche, je vais aider au monde qui en a besoin. Un petit peu de bénévole, on va livrer des maquillages à faire ou on va vider des logements tant que le monde meurt. Que les questions qu'on a, le canal, j'en donne au monde que je connais qui m'arrache. Je vais arrêter, je vais jouer à tout le monde, prendre un café, parler, on, on fait des niaiseries. Yeah, you know Mickey, you was over there. You remember you something there? Yeah, I gave you the furniture. Yeah, yeah. I remember, right? Good. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Rich. Take it easy, man. Bye. All right. Que j'aime travailler dans le public, c'est ma vie. Je peux pas, je suis pas capable de m'en passer. Il faut, faut que je travaille avec le public parce que j'ai tout le temps travaillé avec le public. J'ai pas travaillé rien que dans un restaurant, j'ai travaillé dans un bar, j'ai fait des spectacles dans un bar. Ça fait 59 ans que j'habite à Saint-Henri. Ça, c'est à mon coin, ça. Puis on est devant le bord des consuls que j'ai travaillé 10 ans. Dans le temps, c'était du euh, country. Maintenant, c'est plus du country. C'est euh, autrement. J'ai vu le quartier changer, oui. J'ai vu beaucoup changer euh, la rénovation, bien des commerces qui ont fermé. Puis c'est tous des restaurants. C'est pas tout le monde qui a les moyens, c'est à vie, là. Parce que beaucoup de monde sont dans le misère ici. Moi, j'ai déjà été dans la misère, j'ai déjà été dans la rue. J'avais perdu pas mal. Puis il y a du monde qui m'ont aidé, ils m'ont cueilli, ils m'ont aidé à sortir. Parce que j'ai. J'ai déjà été dans le monde de la drogue aussi, là, comme tout le monde. J'ai essayé ça, tout ça. Mais aujourd'hui, j'ai un ami euh, que j'aime beaucoup, que j'adore. C'est elle qui m'a sorti de là. Il a 12 ans. Déjà 12 ans.
Yeah, this is the number one uh, way I get to work. The overall commute is about just under an hour. It takes me about an hour for the uh, train, metro, and uh, the walk to work. And coming back is not that great. It's tough to try to make metros and trains and try and get the last one. 12.30 is pretty early, so it just gets to be too much to get home from there. If I miss the last train, I pretty much just stay at somebody's place, uh, st stay with a buddy for a while, or uh, stay at the restaurant occasionally. <laughs> I've camped out at table 16, that's the, the infamous Sean table. Looking for a place downtown is going to be the next thing after, I'm probably going to have to do that somewhere in between this house, uh, getting rid of the house. I'm going to have to start looking at places and figuring something out. Once the house gets sold, I think the next step is to go to culinary school. You know, like you start heading on a certain path and you just want to advance, you know? So like with the people around me, the opportunities I have, to me it makes sense to just, you know, dive into it. If I could just work hard and like earn some respect doing something that like a lot of chefs have started off doing. But you're helping like just play a part in a team and believe in what they're doing and want them to be successful, so you work hard towards that. I see a future in the kitchen for me. I do. You have to work really hard here and you have to uh, just show people you care and it can be intimidating especially because it's a male-dominated uh, work environment, but that was okay with me because I've spent most of my life mostly around guys. Always like crazy rough activities like football and soccer and like working with my dad on cars and having this background of always like getting my hands dirty has really been uh, what influenced me to do well in this job just because I always have done hands-on work. Despite gender norms, like it did surprise everyone when I came in and just like killed it. Just, they didn't realize I was going to be working this hard. Oh, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't stand in front of doors. That's no. not very smart. Right. At first, when people would ask me, oh, like, what do you do? Like, and I was in school and I was like, I'm a dishwasher. And they're like, oh, dope. But then when I graduated and they were like, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm a dishwasher. Still? And then, I don't know, there was a, like an identity crisis that I had for a moment, and then I was like, the dishwasher is dope. Like, I have fun, I'm happy. And that was the whole point of like going to school and learning about the things that I wanted to learn about in philosophy, because if I'm happy dishwashing, who cares? Oh, il y a un shoulder. C'est pour ça que ça a pris un petit peu de temps. Une cliente. Un shoulder, on n'a même pas eu ça du bord encore. Des fois, des fois, on est peut-être euh, 3, 4, 5 petits shooters. Ça, c'est des clients. Là, tu sors du site, des fois, t'es. Mais moi, je veux pas sortir ici, là, c'est pas Faut que je sois en forme pour demain. Bon, une bonne cigarette. Demain matin, je m'en vais aider un gars à la rue bénévolement, à peinturer avec lui. Il paye la pizza et la bière. C'est parfait. Après ça, vers midi, je pars au Fougial au gouvernement. La régie des rentes. Parce que je m'envoie mes rentes du Québec. Là. 60 ans. Là. 
Parce que là, ça va pas, moi. Depuis l'année passée, là, ils nous doivent un an. Un bon 4-5 000 Ça se prend bien. On va peut-être se payer une semaine, deux semaines de vacances à Cuba. On le sait pas. Ça fait longtemps que je veux y aller. Je vais le mérite. Ça, va, ça va être mérité. Pas mal. Ils vont venir brun, brun, brun. Après ça, ils vont me regarder, ils vont dire « Oh, la star! <rire> » Déjà là, le monde m'appelle la star dans, dans le restaurant. « Hey, la vedette! » Je dis « Non, je suis pas vedette, je suis bien sain. »« Yes! »« Trois plats, OK. »« Trois plats. » When my parents passed away and stuff, like, and I started working here, man, like, there's some things that I just didn't expect, like, sitting down for a staff meal, and, like, it made me think, like, man, like, or just, like, like, at the time we're uh, having Thanksgiving dinner at my aunt's, just, like, it's a thing you don't think about, but, like, I appreciate it so much now, just being able to sit around with people that are, like, family, shoot the shit, and have a, have a good time for a bit, you know, like, it, it means a lot to me, that bit. So, explain the recipe to everyone. Chicken breast, mayo. <laughs> Parmesan cheese in the oven till the cheese gets burnt and the mayo is like <laughs> a consistency I can't explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and my brother love it. That's just what it is. And don't knock it till you try it. Anyway, I'm, so gonna, no, no, I'm gonna knock no. it in. <laughs> 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 yeah, you put those damn glasses there, eh? Man. Cleveland. Cleveland, man. Basketball. I know nothing about it, but we're making bets. That's what I'm saying, All right, have fun tonight. Take care. Right now, we're just gonna go to the depth and see my buddy. He's not really my buddy, but you know what I mean. And it's candy time and it's bets time. I used to get anxiety sometimes just going to the depth. Yeah, just sometimes, you know, you're thinking about how crazy the night's gonna be. It's not every night, but some nights I'm like, oh my god, what the hell's going on, man? It's fucking World War III in here. These fluffy things, man, they're the worst. 